Uh, you know, John Aston's work on the survey of physicians and medical students in terms of their awareness of mind-body medicine and, and the evidence base for that, and then the way that they have chosen to integrate or not integrate these kind of insights into their practice. And the surprising thing was that there's a, a pretty good awareness of the nature of the evidence, and yet a very small number of people who are actually beginning to integrate these principles into their practice. Why is that? Why would you say from your own experience? Well, there, there are many, many answers to that question. Um, first, the amount of information taught in medical school is overwhelmingly large. So what you choose to bring into your practice after graduation is really a conscious choice. You, don't, you can't do everything that you learn. You often do what your group does. So if you join a group of physicians, you're going to mimic their behaviors. That's one reason. The other reason is that some of the alternative or, or um, integrative medicine practices are outside the scope of the philosophy of allopathic medicine. What I mean by that is allopathic medicine being having a lot of density, a lot of information, um, is very limited in the way you think. And let me compare that now to uh, Ayurvedic medicine, for instance. Um, in Ayurvedic medicine, it's a very different philosophy. You're using natural products. You're working with the earth, if you will. Meditation and consciousness are really the core of Ayurveda. That's a completely different philosophic construct than allopathic medicine. So for the individual that's interested in using Ayurvedic techniques or Ayurvedic medicine as a whole, they have a lot of work to do. They have a lot more learning to do. And by the time you're done with your four years of medical school, two, three, four, five years of training, most people don't have the energy to take on that much work and then, in essence, go against the grain of the group that they're working with. So I think the adaptation is a slow process. Another piece of this is a generational piece. Um, medical students 20 and 30 years ago thought alternative medicine was far out and wacky. The medical student of today is actually very personally interested in this. Really what they want to know is what works. And if you look at that, um, even in the medical schools that are not teaching alternative practices, there are alternative or integrative medicine clubs that form. The students form these, their, these interest clubs, if you will, and they bring speakers in. So there is a core interest and it's growing. And as I mentioned, it really is a generational shift. The new generation of physicians will be doing more and more of these, these, these practices. And as they walk into groups to begin their clinical lives, uh, they'll be surrounded by people doing more and more of these practices. It's just going to take time. The best way to build um, an integral or whole person approach is to make it clearly applicable so that the patient understands that it has value for them. One thing that comes to mind for me is uh, a fellow who was He's currently 92 years old, who has been in our heart program since the mid-80s. Uh, Die-hard, rigid, um, Germanic fellow who will only do what's right and only do it when he wants to, and he's very dogmatic about things. And he learned a yoga practice back in 1986 that he still practices today on a daily basis for an hour and 15 minutes exactly. Did he do that because he wanted to become more conscious? No. He did it because he didn't want to die of another heart attack. He had had four heart attacks at that point and a bypass and a few angioplasties and just didn't want to go through that anymore. So his goal was not to gain consciousness. It was to not die of heart disease. However, has he become more conscious? Absolutely. He's now writing children's books and he's very playful and even in his 90s, hyper energetic, still hiking, loving the world, loving nature. And this was not the man that I had met in 1986. So, how do we get, allow people to gain more consciousness? We create ways for them to learn that meet them at the, their level, uh, wherever they are. This fellow just didn't want to die, um, but we met him at his level with a yoga program that, that's worked beautifully for him. Others will come into this wanting consciousness, um, but frankly, in the healthcare reason, uh, arena, it's much more the desire not to be sick that drives them. And if we can teach them that a meditation practice, a yoga practice, a Tai Chi practice helps them not be sick, that's enough.